Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be doing um, a painting, watercolor painting of a poinsettia or poinsettia, however you prefer to say it. Um, <clears throat> I was going to just do it loosely just with my watercolor brush, but I think what I'm going to do instead is do a sketch of one real quickly. Um, just referring to a photo on, on the computer just so that I have something to look at. I don't even have my poinsettia yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this in a little bit faster mode and you can watch what I'm doing. Okay, so now I have my my uh, sketch down, and <clears throat> these are going to remain green. I don't have any veins on them yet um, because the veins are lighter, but on the red areas, I decided to put veins in because it will help later for me to see uh, exactly where to put them, and since the veins are darker on the red leaves, um, I'm not going to all the trouble to put all the little square things in between here like you see on the veins of the leaf. I mean, I'm not getting super realistic. Um, this is just going to be for a Christmas card, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and start painting. The colors I'm going to be using today are, um, I'll use quinacridone red, which is a lighter red. It's more of a almost a corally color. And then I will also be using alizarin crimson. This is an off-brand of alizarin crimson, um, but I do have my um, Daniel Smith over here on my portable palette from the N Plein Air Pro easel. I set up all the colors on that too. I don't know if you guys want to see them right now or not, but I'll just give you a quick glance at what I did. Um, these are the colors that I set up. I just, um, and I did a little painting on it to check it out um, last night. I used it standing up and sitting down. I'm kind of use, I was kind of using it sideways here, as you can see. But I have my Hansa Yellow Medium, uh, Nickel Azo Yellow, which probably was unnecessary because I also have Raw Sienna, which is very similar but this one is a little bit brighter in color, so I do have both. And I'll probably change these around. That's why I didn't put a lot of paint in them anyway. Then I have my New Gamboge um, Rich Green Gold. These are all Daniel Smith colors. Sap Green, that one is Windsor New Newton Cotman. I'm trying to use up my um, tube that I got in my sketch box back in June or July. Um, then this is... Green Appetite Genuine, which is a sedimentary color. This is Ultramarine Turquoise, uh, which is a different, a little bit different than um, regular turquoise. Then this is Thalo Blue Green Shade, um, which is the traditional Thalo. A lot of people like red shade as well, but I use the green shade. Um, then this is Ultramarine Blue, Raw Sienna, and in order to get all my colors in, I split these two palettes, uh, these two wells in half, which really helped me. Um, this is Quinacridone Sienna, which is more of an orange color, but I put it with my browns. Um, burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Payne's Gray, Indigo Blue. I put these two together because I often use them together. Um, this is Alizarin Crimson, and this is an extra little pan that I had of quinacridone red and then I also had my quinacridone magenta out and decided not to use it so um so that's what I have on my palette and it's working out 
just fine. Um, I, I really like it and I love having that water well in the middle. That is just the most awesome thing. And then when I'm using the water, I can just um, go like this with my brush. I can do it on the sides as well, but this really helps to take the excess water out of my brush, which is nice. So, Okay, moving back to the poinsettia. Um, let's go ahead and get started painting. Oh, the colors I'm going to be using for the green are um, my Nickel Azo Yellow, Rich Green Gold, and Ultramarine Blue. And if you want to paint along and you don't have those colors, any reds or pinks will do uh, for the... Um, poinsettia, or even if you wanted to do a white poinsettia, you can go ahead and mix a very neutral color of uh, yellow ochre or raw sienna, a very, very pale to make the white um, off-white. Um, <clears throat> but I'll be using the quinacridone red first, uh, especially in the smaller leaves, and then as they get deeper in color, I'm going to be switching over to the alizarin crimson. And I believe that's it. So let's get painting. On these leaves now, I've dropped in the um, rich green gold, which is a real yellowy kind of a shade. Um, it's a gold shade, but it's got a hint of green to it. And then I'm just dragging in some ultramarine blue to give character to the leaf. I don't want everything the same color, like as you can see over here. Now this one is oops darn it that's not what I wanted to do don't put thumbprints in your painting um, I want to wait till that's just damp and then I'm gonna drag in some veins if I do it now the color will seep into the drag marks and it will make the veins darker but if I wait until it's almost dry it will have the reverse effect 
because the color won't be able to drag down into those little divots and it'll stay lighter, which is what I want. And I'm leaving this little area of the underside of my leaf uh, white for now because I need this edge to dry before I go back and do anything to that. So again, I'm going to do a wet into wet technique here. This brush is not the right brush to use. It's a sable, but it doesn't come to a fine point here, as you can see. Um, and I've got some really tight spaces, so I'm not getting right in there with it. Am I off frame again? Uh, let me scooch this back. I'm trying to um, keep the camera close enough so that you can get a good view, but then you can't see my palette. Uh, I'm struggling here a little bit. Whoops, is this the wrong color? Yep, that was that was olive green. This is rich green gold, yeah. The olive green's just a little darker and a little more opaque. I'll show you the difference. See, that's the olive green. And I want the gold. Just going to let that flow in over the entire leaf, like I did on the others. And this is almost a little too wet, but... Um, this paper can tolerate a little more water because of the cotton in it, so it should be okay. And now I'm taking some ultramarine blue here, um, and I'm just going to start to drop it in. I want the dark areas especially to be by the other leaves where it would be making it darker anyway. That saves me having to do that. this one dark around the tip, which is different from the others. Wet into wet technique is fun, don't you think? I think it is. It's just fun to watch how the, um, the <clears throat> paint is going to act. I'm going to give this a shot now and see if this is dry enough. I'm using a paint knife because I can't find my credit card piece. Oh, there's one. My table is so messy right now. Okay. I may have waited a little bit too long. No, nope, it's going to work, I think. I want to cut into my paper though. It's a, the paper is a little soggy underneath. There, that should work. Oops, I'm doing it again with my thumb. What am I doing? Why do I think I can touch wet paint? Duh. <laughs> Don't mind me. And now I've got too much water on that because I went back and grabbed the wrong brush. So now let me do this, and there we go. A little blue. A little bit of that. There. It'll be okay. Just dragging it around a little bit so that it doesn't look so stark against the other colors. There we go. That'll work. Alrighty. This one is almost ready. I'm going to go ahead and paint this area. Looks like that has already dried. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put this in while I can. <clears throat> A little piece of credit card or plastic card is great. You know those all those little fake credit cards you get in the mail when they want you to apply for credit. Those things work great. This was an old Fandango card from a movie theater after I had finished it. I don't like using Fandango cards because my favorite theaters don't take them. We have theater 
here in Michigan. Um, it's called Imagine. It's a Michigan theater. And it's the kind that has the, the recliners. You can lay down in the movie. I've fallen asleep twice now in a movie. <laughs> I wonder if they come in and start kicking people out after the movie because they find people sleeping in their theater all the time. I've left before and have seen people still sleeping. Just napping. Waste of a good, you know, twelve dollars or however much it costs. But anyway, those cards do work good for that. I collect them because I do the nail stamping on my fingers too. <laughs> And I need the credit card, the cards to swipe the stamping polish off my plates, my steel plates. You guys don't need to know all that, do you? Okay, now that did not work. I need a different color here because... Mm, let's see. I may introduce some sap green just for this one spot because I want it to be light. There, that'll work. There we go. I want it to have that subdued color that the underside of a leaf has, you know? And then this side I'm going to add a little more blue to this area. See if I can do it without making it too blue. Although it doesn't matter. It's not like this is realistic. There, that works a little bit better, I guess. Okay. And then this one got a little too dry now, too. Whoopsie. It's all right, the whole thing doesn't have to be done. Now, I'm going to do something to the edges, too. Um, looks like I missed some veining on this, too. I've got to fix that one. So I'm going to go ahead and speed it back up, get that cleaned up and finished. Um, well, I guess I can just do it while you guys are listening to me babble. And now I stop babbling. So it was really fun last night getting out my my new easel and playing with it a little bit. Um, what did I do here? That should come way down. I didn't draw that in though. If that's that small, it's not going to make it to the inner part of the plant. So I've got to make this bigger. That looks a little more realistic there. It can make it up to here. There. I may have to dry this with my dryer so that I can get the veins on. This thing, this dryer of mine, this heat gun, it's not a dryer. Um, the heat gun is on its last leg. It's only like 20, 20 years old. <laughs> but some days it doesn't want to start. And this is why I hate using heat guns on watercolor paper because it warps it. But if you turn it upside down, you can usually straighten it out. There's a warp spot there. Once I glue it down, it'll be fine. If I glue it down to a card, uh-oh, I hope so. Anyway, okay, let me do the veining. For the veining, I just went ahead and used some quinacridone magenta because it's such a very deep pigment, and it holds the, um, that's not where I want to go, though. It's 
It's got to go like this. There we go. That'll work. Okay, now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do to the rest of this. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of splattering because everybody loves a good paint splatter. And I'm just gonna fiddle around here. Okay, so I've splattered as much as I'm going to splatter, I think. Um, and I think I'm about done with that. So now I want to dress it up with a little bit of glitter since it is Christmas after all. And I've got my Wink of Stella pens. Um, these pens, for those of you who are unfamiliar, I buy mine on Amazon. And I got a set last year or two years ago maybe it has been now um it had the clear glitter um the this one is the gold glitter and i got red and green glitter and they're pens that are actually pigmented um but they they um i'll show you here you squeeze them if you need to push any ink up through but they have a glimmer to them and I don't know if you can catch the glimmer on the um, let me point this light right down at this if you can see the glimmer or not I'm not sure you probably can't catch it it's very subtle it's not like heavy duty glitter um, and they're great pens there's the gold. You can do lettering with them. You can do um, painting with them. Um, I might even do some edging here. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. It's too late now. I already did it. <laughs> I'm just putting a little green on here in between the veins. Maybe back by this blue here. Or I can dot it in here and there. I don't know. I don't like that. Um, the red I did use on another one. Um, is this it? No, that's not it. Oh, it might be this one. This was one I was fooling around with. Um, and I don't think you can see the glitter, but the red on here, the veining I did with the pen. There, you can pick it up a little bit when I tilt it on its side. But anyhow. Um... So I might just do a little bit of painting on a couple of the leaves in glitter. That's what I'll do, just like that. Just so that it catches the eye. Although that's too bright, I'm going to leave it. Oops, it might be too late now. I'd rather have my clear, and I don't know where my clear went. I was using it on my snowman cards, and I, like I said, I've got too much crap everywhere. What's this color? Well, that's the green and the red I just had in my hand. Oh, well. So, anyway, well, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and make a card now and glue this down. I don't know if you want to watch me do the rest of that. I guess I could do that on camera. Hang on. Some of these, I got these pre-made cards. They're, I don't like this card stock because I find it a little flimsy, but for a Christmas card, it's, you know, not too bad. Um... And you can use your bone folder to fold them in half if you need to, but I'm just using my fingers. I always um, put this on the back. I stamp on handmade by, and then I write my name in here. Um, and sign the front of your painting, always, always. 
Now which way do I want this to face? Well, it's going to have to be horizontal because that's what's on the back of the card. But do I want it to face this way? Or this way? I think this way is better. Because the weight of the card, the weight of these leaves is kind of pulling it down, I think. Really could go any way. That, that's pretty too, though. Hmm. I think I'll go this way. I think that's how I was painting it originally anyway, so. Just put my name. Looks like Skullin. There, now it says Skullin. And I want to put some paper behind this. Oh, I'm going to have to cut it down too. So let me cut that down. Just take a little bit off of the edges here. I thought I already had it cut at six, but I guess I did not. And four. Don't want to do it that way. Well, I guess I'll have to do a little off of each side. Oh, let's see. I don't want to cut the leaf off. I've got these little, I don't see it, know if you can see that in there, but there's this little wire that runs through the center that shows me where my paper is sitting. Oh, can you see that black line? That's a wire guide, which is really awesome to have. You always know where your cut is going to be. Okay, so I wanted to get some paper to put behind it, some cardstock. So let me grab some of that. I'm thinking I'll go with this olive green color. I think that works well. Um, so let me just cut and measure that. I think my card is six and I dropped my ruler, of course. It's under my table. Uh, let's see. I think these cards are six by... Let's see here. Six and a half by five. That's right. So my paper needs to be about six and a quarter... by four and three quarters. There, that should do it. Let's see. I warped my paper. I'm going to wet the back of it and try to straighten it out. Don't use a heat gun, it's not good. Don't do what I do, <laughs> in this case anyway. Let's see. Sometimes wetting the back and it allows you to stretch the paper back out. And it doesn't matter if I had had it taped down because it would still have warped from the heat. It screws with the sizing in the paper. So if you're going to dry anything, you should really dry it with a hair dryer, something cooler, because those heat guns are meant for melting um, um, your, uh, what you call it, I'm sorry, embossing powder, <laughs> holy smokes, okay, it's still a little damp here, Let's see if I can get that dried real quick without bending it. a little bit. I went too far again, I think. Nope. It's going to lay flat this time. Good. Okay. My double-sided tape. I still need to get to the store for my other stuff, but I'm just going to... This has a front and a back. This side is kind of um, like it's got a uh, tooth to it. So I'm going to just put this on the back. Don't need a lot of tape. Oops, I got something on there. It's all right, they'll never see it on the back. Listen to me. <laughs> that. 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 And that. Okay. Stick that on.
and then I'll do the same with this. I'm gonna move my camera up a little bit. You don't need a close up for taping. Now, the painting, I try to get my tape right up to the absolute edge so that the edges stick down a little more. And I put a little more tape on because this paper is heavier weight. And I don't want it to, whoops, don't want it to um, lift it off. I warped this and let's put that down right about there oops I'm off a little bit but that's okay now see I still have a little warped spot right here darn it oh I do have tape there I guess I can get it down there we go okay so then all you need to do is stamp your sentiment on it if you want to put one on the outside you can but it's going to be covering my painting so i'm just going to leave it blank and then i will put a stamp on the inside merry christmas whatever and then i am done so that is today's poinsettia painting slash greeting card everybody have a great day Bye bye